Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today we are here to talk about some books that I think are overhyped or overrated. <music> So I actually got the idea to do this video from Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. Not only did she do this video, but she actually in her video mentioned one of my favorite romances of all time. So completely out of spite and the need for retribution, I decided to go ahead and make this video because I know at least one or two of her favorites is going to be featured in here as well. But in all honesty, I just really like the idea of the video. So I wanted to go ahead and do it. So of course, I'm going to go ahead and give the standard caveats here. If you ultimately ended up really loving the books and do not feel they are overhyped and overrated, that is wonderful for you. I'm so glad these books worked out for you the way that they're working out for. It seems like the majority of people, they just didn't affect me in the same way. And I will say that some of the books that I'm going to talk about here, I actually really did enjoy. It's not that they're bad books. It's that I don't necessarily believe they deserve all of the hype and the attention that they're getting. Like I don't feel they are God tier level, if that makes sense. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. These books are listed in no particular order. They are literally just listed in the order that I thought of them. So the very first book that I want to reference is a book that I've talked about multiple times, and that is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. This is a TikTok darling. Everybody seems to love this series, but I was so traumatized by this first book that I don't think I could stomach ever reading anything by this author ever again. Not only do I think this book is overhyped and overrated, but objectively, I think that this is a really bad book. This is essentially a brother's best friend romance. So it follows our main character and her brother is moving away and her brother tasks his best friend to watch out for her. She really doesn't like her brother's best friend or so she says, and then eventually it develops into this relationship. But this book was so completely over the top and unrealistic. A lot of the plot points felt like they were straight out of a soap opera. But not only that, this book took alpha hole possessiveness to a very unhealthy and unsexy level. I typically like a little bit of a good alpha romance, but the way that this guy operated, it just was not sexy. His possessiveness was just straight up toxic and I couldn't get past it. But of course, I also couldn't get past the very extra over the top soap opera level plot points that were in this story. I could not suspend my disbelief. And I also couldn't suspend my disbelief on the fact that this guy went from a casual hookup kind of guy, a player, somebody who would never be in a relationship to like instantly wanting to dedicate himself to his best friend's little sister. Now I have heard that the series gets better. I've heard a lot of people who really dislike the first book like I did really go on to enjoy the second book, but you could not pay me enough to read the second book in this series unless of course it's for some kind of punishment or unless of course it's like one of your recommendations and I'm trying to read like my subscribers right now. For the most part, I just cannot see myself ever wanting to read anything by Anna Huang because of how legitimately awful I felt this book was. Now this next book is a fairly recent read of mine. I read it, I think it was in December. December. I have talked about it quite frequently and I certainly know that this is probably 100% a me thing because not only is this an extremely popular book, this is a Pulitzer Prize winning book and who am I to say that a Pulitzer Prize winner does not deserve that award, you know what I mean? But I am of course talking about Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. For all intents and purposes, this is a book that should have worked out very, very well for me because it is a very character driven story. There's a lot of harder hitting topics to it, but for some reason the execution of the story did not work for me and ultimately it was bordering on trauma porn. I just don't like trauma porn. I just don't like a book where one bad thing after another after another happens with no real ultimate purpose. This follows our main character, a boy who's nicknamed Demon Copperhead, and he's essentially born on the floor of a trailer to a white trash single teenage mother, and his life is just crap from start to where the book is ending. And another complaint that I have about this book, it is a fairly long book. I can't remember how long it is off the top of my head. It's probably over 500 pages possibly, but this book only covers a handful of years in this boy's life. I think the book starts when he's maybe like eight or nine, and it ends when he he's like graduating high school. So it maybe covers about 10 years of his life in total. And it's just so tedious. It's like literally every little thing that he goes through in great agonizing detail. And to me, it was just so slow. It was so boring. I wasn't connecting to the main character. We are completely in his head the entirety of the time. And he just wasn't a character that I wanted to be in the mind of. Because yes, I know that he's going through some terrible things and he has a right to be upset about it. He has a right to be angry and bitter about it. But that to me was just his entire personality. You know what I mean? And so it just got old watching him struggle through these things over and over and over again. But not really seeing any growth or progression because like I said, this book still ended when he was very, very young. We don't even get to see him in his adult years. We don't get to see any of that that's happening. And I know like the overarching point of the story was kind of to draw attention to the opioid crisis. And I totally get that. But to me, even that was just overshadowed by the tedium of the story that was happening. Because yes, Demon Copperhead's life ultimately is on the trajectory that it is because of that crisis. But still overall, I just, I just didn't care. I didn't care about this character. I didn't like being in his head. I almost DNF'd this book. 
I was, I think just at the 50% mark or past the 50% mark. And I set it down fully never intending to pick it back up, but it was bothering me that I had gotten so far into the story and I wasn't finishing it. So I completed it, but I really did not enjoy my experience reading that story. And again, I know that that's really a me thing. I know that so many people love the story, but to me, the execution of it was just lacking. It might just be the way that Barbara Kingsolver tells her stories, but unfortunately this one did not work for me. Another one that I have mentioned quite frequently is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Now I want to give a caveat that says that I think this book is beautifully written and I would love to read more from Gabrielle Zevin in the future. I do have plans on reading a backlist story of hers in the month of May. So I'm not saying that I will never read from Gabrielle Zevin again because I really did enjoy her writing style. And for all intents and purposes, again, this is a story that should have worked out very well for me because it's a very character driven narrative that follows two really close friends. Basically, I think it was like over 30 plus years and all of the trials and tribulations they go through. And all of that is centered around video game design because that is what they do. And that's how they get famous and they make their money. But the problem is, is that when you are creating a character driven narrative and the characters are pretty awful and you really don't like them or root for them, it's very, very hard to want to continue the story. I would say for the first half of the story, it was probably a solid four, 4.5 stars. I was really enjoying it. I was really digging the story. I was even enjoying learning about the video game aspects to it. I am not a gamer in any way, shape or form, but I still thought it was quite fascinating. And I thought that the way that the information was presented was done very accessibly. But then you're getting into the second half of the story. And one of our main characters, Sadie, just completely devolves into an awful human being. Like I just didn't like anything about her. I didn't like any of the choices that she was making. I thought that she was incredibly selfish. And I thought that she was projecting a lot of really toxic emotions onto somebody who was supposed to be her best friend. Like she was accusing him of doing all of these things when there was really no evidence of him doing that. It was just like her own paranoia and her own fear. And so she kind of broke up this partnership all because of that. And you know, she completely moved away and she stopped her role in the video game business and kind of left it all on her best friend. And I just, I hated her. There are very few times when I'm so actively sickened by a character that it really ruins my reading experience. And this was one of them. Like I could not overlook my distaste of Sadie. And I know that's not an issue for everybody. I know that a lot of people don't care if the characters are unlikable. They can still get behind the story. And typically I can too, but there was something so egregiously awful about Sadie and the way that it impacted the entire story, especially like the end of it. I was very unsatisfied by the ending of it because I felt like we had gone through this really huge journey, really not to get anywhere all that special. So I had just a really big problem with the way that Gabrielle Zevin took the story. And I'm disappointed by that because everybody was loving this story. They were ranting and raving about it. And then I get to it and it was just so disappointing because of the way she chose to create her characters. So unfortunately, Tomorrow Times 3 is on this list. Another one that I think is hugely overrated, this actually made one of my worst books of 2022. And that is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I was actually floored by how much I disliked that story. And I absolutely hated the writing. It's kind of like a locked room mystery. It follows our main character, Daisy Darker. She's returning home for kind of like a family reunion because it's her beloved grandmother's birthday. And her grandmother lives kind of like on this secluded island that you have to drive on a bridge to get to. But at high tide, I think it is like you can't access the bridge at all. It's too dangerous. And so naturally the storm comes through. Nobody has any way to get off the island. And then Nana is murdered. And of course, everybody is a suspect. So in theory, the overall premise of the story is not terrible. I like a good isolation thriller. This had a lot of potential. But first of all, one of the major twists in this story was entirely too predictable. I think I probably predicted what the main twist was going to be by chapter two or three. Now that wasn't the only twist. There was still another twist that happened towards the end of the book that I actually quite enjoyed. But for the most part, I would say the major twist was very, very predictable. But what was really angering to me, Alice Feeney decided that she needed to give her readers life lessons. And so there would be little snippets of things here and there talking about life is like this and all of these very moral philosophical things that you need to know about life. And I absolutely hated it. It didn't fit with the story. It didn't flow well. It didn't need to be there. I was also really not connecting to the home movie part of it. I felt very disconnected from a lot of the stuff that was happening in the story. And again, this is one of those situations where you're full of unlikable characters. You don't like absolutely any of them. Why am I going to invest myself in this thriller and enjoy this thriller if I don't like any of the characters and don't care what happens to any of the characters? So ultimately, this just did not work for me. I do not know why it is so popular. I'm going to go ahead and give Alice Feeney one more shot. But if she doesn't knock it out of the park with this other one, it is adios to her because I absolutely dislike Daisy Darker. And I definitely do not think that it's worth all the hype that it gets. 
Do y'all hear that? That is Archibald trying to get into this room. He is not happy that I've locked him out of the room and he is making his presence known. So I'm really, really sorry if you can hear that. Another one I'm going to say is overhyped or overrated, but I completely acknowledge that this again is definitely probably a me thing. And it's just because the book is not to my taste. And that is Circe by Madeline Miller. Madeline Miller is a very beloved author of like literary Greek myth retellings. And I picked up Circe because it was like a book club selection of this random book club that I was a part of a few years ago. And I decided to pick it up. It was not something that I ever would have picked up otherwise. And so I picked it up. I listened to the audiobook and it was okay. It was fine. It was, I felt very slow and boring for the most part. I wasn't connected to the story or the character. I really didn't care about anything that was happening in the story overall. And ultimately it was just kind of a forgettable reading experience. Like I cannot even sit here and tell you most of what it's about, except that it's about Circe, the witch from Greek myth. And that's, that's it. That's all that I got for you. Circe is definitely one that I don't get the hype behind, but also at the same time, I understand that that's a very specific type of genre. It's a very specific type of book and I could understand why that book would appeal to other people. It just didn't work for me. Another series that I feel is kind of overhyped and overrated is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. That is a historical military fantasy that is inspired by Chinese history and it's also filled with magic and things like that. First I felt the story was entirely too long. I felt like it was very slow. It was poorly paced. There were whole parts of the story that really just focused on like military tactics and military maneuvers which I just really didn't care about which is pretty important considering it is like a military fantasy right. It follows our main character as she's going to this school and she's going to like hone her abilities but things kind of get shaken up when war comes and they have to be battle ready. I really remember appreciating the time when they were at the school up to a certain point but then it lost me. It got a little bit weird. I have my Goodreads review pulled up here and it says at a certain point students at the school have to pledge a specialization and Rin decides to pledge lore which is a very obscure subject that no other student has pledged and it was at this point that I started to get lost. Essentially lore was based on shamanism and teaching Rin how to become one so that she could speak with and channel gods. I was lost throughout the section, not fully grasping this rather mystic concept, and it didn't help that her master was a very flaky, unstable, odd individual. The magic system in general felt very undefined, and I don't feel we were given enough information about it to truly grasp onto what it was and certainly not how it worked. I wasn't really enjoying the magic system, which as I mentioned was undefined. I wasn't connected to any of the characters. Rin herself was very, very unlikable, and I have heard this from a lot of people. She was very power hungry. She was blindly driven by this hatred for their enemy, which was so strong. It was kind of overpowering her common sense and really leading to a lot of impulsive decisions. And I found myself frustrated with her a lot of the time. And this was a very, very plot driven story. And y'all know me, I'm a very character driven reader. So I felt like if it was going to be as long as it was, there could have been less instances of focus on military strategy and a little bit more development of the characters, a little bit more focus on their relationships in order for me to connect to them emotionally and actually care about what happened to them. That is another series that I know is very, very well beloved. A lot of people really, really love it, but it just did not work for me. And this last book, I saved it for last because it's actually a DNF. So a lot of people are going to be able to argue that I didn't give this a full and fair chance and they might be right but why am I going to give a full and fair chance to a book that is not really working for me or I don't think is delivering on what it promised and that book is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This book took the world by storm and it continues to take the world by storm. It's a lot of people's favorite romance and I completely got swept up in the hype because for all intents and purposes this is another book that really should have worked for me. It is supposed to be a hate to love romance but all I remember is I was putting this book on. I was very early days. I was getting ready and probably within the first couple of chapters the two main characters who are supposed to hate each other were like going at it in an elevator. And I almost instantly DNF'd the book at that point because you are not delivering on hate to love. These two people are basically rivals. They work for the same company and I guess there's going to be like some kind of promotion and they're both in line for it and they're going to have to compete to get the promotion. And they've never really liked each other before that. They kind of spend their time really making each other's lives difficult and harassing each other. So they definitely have that rival air to each other and they might have a strong dislike or distaste for each other, but they certainly don't hate each other. And that is very, very evident in this story when they're almost instantaneously going at it. I didn't feel like there was any buildup at all to the story and to them actually getting into a physical relationship. And so as soon as that happened, I could not get behind it. Now, some people might be able to argue, yes, but I mean, they've known each other for a long time. This has probably all been building and building and building and they're finally acting on it, but we don't see any of that on page. You know what I mean? We get glimpses of that and that's it. How am I supposed to invest in and root for this relationship if there was no buildup and I really don't even feel any chemistry between them? I've talked about this multiple times on my channel recently, but I do not like insta love or insta lust. And when you're not really giving that development, even if these characters have known each other for years prior to the start of the story, we as the readers have not known them for years. And I'm going to need you to give me a little bit of something in order for me to actually want this to happen. So I don't feel like Sally Thorne did a good job of setting up the actual hate to love situation in this because I didn't really feel like they hated each other at all. I felt like they were frustrated and annoyed with each other a good amount of the time, but there was never any hatred involved. And then ultimately they just started going at it really, really quickly in the story. We were still so early days that I really didn't know how the rest of the story was going to be able to go. There was probably 
going to be some like unnecessary conflict that they were going to have to get over all because it was very instant. It was very fast and I just could not get behind it. So ultimately I ended up DNFing it and I could potentially be persuaded to pick it up at some point now that I know what it is going into it. Like maybe if I have correct expectations going into it, I would be better prepared to actually read the story. But that is not what I wanted when I picked up the story. And so because of that, and I knew it wasn't going to fit what I was looking for, I DNF'd it. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are just some of the books out there that I think are overrated or overhyped. As always, of course, please comment down below and let me know some books that you think are overrated or overhyped. Or if you completely disagree with me about any of the books that I talked about today, please feel free to comment that down below as well. I would love to have a discussion with you about it, of course, as long as we are keeping it respectful. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a question mark emoji in honor of my confusion over why a lot of these books are as popular as they are. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below as well as all the books that I talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.